We begin with our main character, Issei Hiodo, who describes his and our main heroine, Rias Gremry's, first true meeting. We hear Issei as he's enchanted by her hair and slowly bleeding to death. Not today. I will not let you die. We see Issei and his friends engaging in their usual antics until they are discovered. When they meet again later before Issei can even finish his sentence, he notices flowing red hair out of the corner of his eyes. For the first time, he and Rhys exchange glances, and Rhys walks away without saying anything. They do however talk about one another in their friend groups. We cut to the next scene, where Issei is frustrated because he will never be with anyone, only for a random girl to approach him and ask to be his girlfriend. Issei is shocked that this is actually happening to him. We move on to the next scene, where Issei is excited to introduce his new girlfriend to his friends. However, we see something interesting. In a flashback right after that, Rhys has asked her friends to keep a safe distance and to watch Issei. The only thing we know at this point is that they are preparing for Issei based on cryptic dialogue. We see Issei waiting for his date, only to be approached by someone else and given a flyer that says, your wish will be granted. When his girlfriend appears, we see a montage of their date, which concludes with them going to a fountain, and then the following occurs. Sure, you can ask me for anything at all. <clears throat> Would you die for me? He now transforms into her true form, a fallen angel, with Issei pleading with her, only to be stabbed. With that, she thanks Issei for the date and flees. With that, Issei has a wish, and we return to the beginning of the episode. We then see Issei conversing with his friends, but none of them recall Issei having a girlfriend, and Issei no longer has proof of her existence. He locks eyes with Issei once more, neither of them saying anything. Issei and his friends decide to go to one of theirs, because Issei was feeling down. When they turn off the lights in the house, Issei can still see, as if the lights are meaningless. He decided to go home because he felt like his body was changing. Hearing a mother and child in the distance, as if they were right next to him, he flees, terrified and perplexed. He ran until he arrived at the park where he died, trying to make sense of it all. A shadowy figure approaches Issei and threatens him. Still unsure of his power, he flees while Issei is running away. The man steps in front of him and stabs him in the back saying it's the worst pain he's ever felt, he can't even touch the blade in his body without getting burned. Before passing out, he notices Rias approaching to save him, with her friends preventing the strange man from doing anything else to him. We learn from their exchange that Rias comes from a noble family named Gremory. We end the episode off with Issei waking up in his bed with Rias. Rias explains that she is his master and a devil. Picking up where the previous episode left off, Issei is still attempting to make sense of everything and asks if Riz is a devil. Only for her to respond. Yes, I did. That's because I am one. Uh, I also told you I'm your master. Uh, I like the name Issei. I'll let you keep it. We then move to the school, where they are both making their way to class, as his friends are envious of his new status now that he's walking with Riz. Panning up, there is an ominous conversation between Rhys and Sona that gives the impression that Issei is more complex than we realise, but she is the only one aware of that. We jump to the afternoon, where Kiba picks up Issei, and he meets the other occult research club members there, Akino and Koniko. With that, Rhys explains that the club is only a facade, and everyone there is actually a demon, whereas the person from yesterday was actually a fallen angel. Issei is stalled when Rhys gives the name of his girlfriend, Yuma Amano. As Issei prepares to go, Rhys presents a picture of the two of them and explains that it wasn't a dream. She was a fallen angel, and the reason no one remembers her is because they all possess the ability to erase people's memories. However, everyone's memories were erased because she succeeded in her mission to murder Issei, if he was strong enough to be viewed as a threat. Issei learns that he possesses a sacred gear, which is something that is only found in a select few and is said to be extremely uncontrollable. He tries to bring up his arm and focus, but is unable to do so. Wondering if he really is that good, he then queries how he is still alive 
if he was killed by Yuma. The flyer that was handed to him is shown to have beckoned Rias, and is revealed that Issei is now her servant. We then switch to Issei riding his bike, promised that if he performs well on his deliveries, he would eventually be rewarded with his own servants. Issei sets his sights on getting his own harem. After finishing, he is required to accept one of Konako's jobs, where because he is unable to teleport, he has to use his bike. Although he was initially turned away, he was eventually let inside, and despite not being able to perform any tasks like Konako could, he managed to engage in a discussion about Dragon Ball Z with the client. On the way back, Insei is being assaulted by another fallen angel. Standing his ground, he chose to confront and use his abilities for the first time, thrusting the fallen angel away. Due to their current situation, Insei is being reprimanded by Rias in the next scene. The following morning, Insei wakes up feeling as if he's made Rias angry. He decided to go out and just then runs into a girl. After picking the stranger up, she asks Issei if he would assist her because she's unfamiliar with the area and lost. She reveals that she is a nun who was assigned to the local church. As she is explaining this, she also uses her power to heal a boy's scraped knee. They walk together a while longer, however due to Issei's body acting strangely at the side of the church, they exchange names, letting us know that her name is Azia. Going back, Rias warns Issei not to enter the church and warns him not to associate with anyone from there since they have the power to erase devils and leave them dead with no hope of resurrection. Later, when the occult research club was dispatched to kill a wandering devil, Rias inquired as to Issei's familiarity with the game of chess, whereas it is explained that each devil has a chess piece designated as an evil piece allotted to them. Is explained to Issei what each of them is when they encounter the stray devil. Rhys is the king, Kiba is a knight with a reputation for speed and swordplay, Konako is a rook with a reputation for strength, Akano is the queen with the advantage over all the other pieces, and Issei is, well, a pawn. Issei was given another summoner mission after they all defeated a stray, and when he arrived, at the residence to begin the mission, he saw that it was unlocked and immediately fell off. When he goes inside, he sees... Ah! <laughs> Holy shit! Punish the wicked. Words to live by. Yes. Wise advice to heed from a holy man. <laughs> Issei is currently engaged in combat with a priest when he overhears a familiar voice, Azia. They exchange glances as Issei reveals that he's a devil and begs for forgiveness for not being honest with her. Azia intervenes but the priest stabs her. Issei becomes furious and fights the priest despite being outmatched. But the club intervenes and stops the priest and saves Issei. Issei goes to apologize but Rhys Angered that the priest attacked Issei, and feeling as she put Issei in harm's way, apologizes to him. They teleport away as reinforcements approach, but Issei makes every effort to save Azia. Unfortunately, he cannot. But before he goes away, he promises her to meet again. All Issei could think about after he recovered was Azia, where he made the decision to train in an effort to win her back. Azia just so happens to meet Issei while working out in the park. After that, they go on a lunch together, and Issei demonstrates to her how to properly eat a hamburger. Azia responds that she wanted to take advantage of the nice weather when Issei inquires to why she bumped into him. Issa then decides to take Azia on a date. Azia treats Issei's wounds at a fountain after they started acting up. Azia then goes on to tell that she was abandoned at a church and that when she was 8 years old, she helped a puppy that had wandered inside the building. However, when she healed a devil one day, the church forced her to flee 
and join the fallen angels. Even though she despises what they do, she still hopes one day that she will accomplish her dream. What are your dreams? To make lots of lifelong friends. To get to know them well and do cool things. To be able to have fun together and care for each other. It's kind of silly. Honestly, I'd be happy to have any friends. Where Insane asserts that the two of them are friends regardless of what others may say. When an unsuspected familiar voice starts to talk, it's Yumo, who we now know is named Rainer. When we learn that Arjia was actually out because she fleed, Insane is ready to face Rainer. However, we do learn something intriguing, namely how frequently Insane is mentioned as someone to watch out for by higher ups. Arjia heals him when he is stabbed in the chest, but Rainer proves that she is still too strong. Thus, Arzia rings with Rainer to save Insei. We then shift to Rhys slapping Insei and urging him to forget about Arzia. Angry, Insei begs to be let go because he's only a pawn piece in the game. However, Rhys demonstrates that pawns have the ability to possess the qualifications of other pieces in the game, but only if they move into territory that the king has designated as enemy territory. Additionally, Rhys informs Insei of his sacred gear, by saying that the more powerful is his emotions, the stronger he becomes. With that, Rhys and Akino have to depart, saying to Insei to not be a fool, that a devil on his own could not defeat them. After they leave, Insei made a decision to enter the Fallen Angels Church. Rhys had a second meaning to what she was saying, however, which allowed help from Kiba and Konako, as Kiba pointed out. Konako, Insei, and Kiba have now left the church. Before entering, Kimba said this. Besides, fallen angels aren't exactly my favorite things in the world. The truth is, I hate them. Kuniko is the first to smash in the door, and they go inside, and they encounter the priest one more time, who informs them that Ozzy is beneath them in the basement, but they will need to go through him to get to her. The main person to fight him is Kimba, who demonstrates his possession of a sacred gear. As a result, Issei turns on his promotion into a rook in order to tank the shots and hit his target. Free leaves, knowing he's outmatched, but it's too late. The literal's intended result was to obtain her sacred gear. The power of Twilight Healing is finally released by Rainer. The power of Twilight Healing is required by Rainer, as we pick up where we left off. With that, Kiba and Konako clear the way for Insei to vanquish Rainer, and ideally, save Arzia. We discover that Rainer has been pursuing this power for years, and has even gone up against her superiors to do it. Insei becomes enraged, and says he finds it hard to believe he ever loved her, insisting that his love for her was genuine and never motivated by lust. But he needed to know why she went along with the date in the first place. We even find out her name had to do with her scheme to kill Insei at dusk. With that, Rene continues to tease and humiliate Insei, driving him further into despair. Driving him to the edge, Insei departs with Azia while promising Kiba and Konako that he will get stronger. Insei puts her down as she enters the chapel, but it's already too late. She passes away in his arms after saying farewell to the only friend she ever known. I never wanted to make you cry. Oh, Lizzie, I'm sorry. Goodbye. All Lizzie can do is beg for her to come back and ask God for forgiveness for her choosing to associate with a devil. We then come back to Rainer, as she is mending her injuries before going up against Insei. Insei, however, is not buying what Rainer is saying, and is growing increasingly irritated by defense of why she was justifying to kill Azia. Her making fun of Insei causes him to finally snap, his sacred gear activation, and making him even angrier than before. He launches an attack, however, it was still inefficient even in no choice but to turn to Satan for assistance. 
and plead for power. All Ise can do is endure the suffering from his wounds, but he's releasing a new surge of power that frightens Rainer, making her want to run away. But it's already too late. You will get away, bitch! No, I have the supreme power! This one's for us! Yeah! We learn, however, that Rhys asked everyone to remain in reserve so that Ise might face Rainer. Konako then places her back at Rhys's feet. We learn that the only reason Rhys became involved in all of this was because she was defending Ise from all the other pursuing fallen angels. Rhys also brings up the fact that the Sacred Gear is actually called the Red Dragon, boosting his power every 10 seconds. It has the ability to transcend both God and a Devil at command. Rainy, however, plays one more trick on Issei. Issei, please. <gasps> I'm sorry, I know I said some mean things to you, but I didn't have a choice. I had to fulfill my role as a fallen angel. Yuma. I mean, if I really didn't care, would I still be wearing your gift? Please don't tell me you forgot. You bought it for me, don't you remember? It reminds me of you. <laughs> you wouldn't let them hurt me, would you, Issei? Shut up. I don't buy it. Rias, please. I can't do this. You've toyed with my servant's emotions for the last time. Be gone. With that, Rhys gives Azia the sacred equipment, and Ise apologizes for his mistake. However, always not lost, and Rhys brings her back as a devil. As a result, Ise is now formally designated as a protector. The next day, Ise asks Rhys if her team would have additional pawns. However, Zlane discovered that she used all eight of them to save Ise, claiming that he must become the most powerful pawn and that the sacrifice was well worth it. Rhys gives him a kiss after that, when Aja comes in the room. With that, Rhys asks how she feels about becoming a devil. However, Aja says that she has no regrets, that she is glad to be with Issei. With that, an ominous set of characters is shown. We then let Aja will be moving into a new house, and that Rhys will arrange for her to do so as well as to arrange for Issei's training. We learn that they are waiting for Arja when Issei begins his training with Rhys the following morning. Arja is now staying at Issei's residence, with Rhys stating that it would be a wise move for Arja to learn to be a good wife. However, when Issei asked if they really have to go through the marriage, she says, If you're lucky. You okay? When both of them return, Rhys wants Aja to start handing out flyers, but Issei's request to go in her place. With that, Issei starts to meet new individuals as he travels. The next day, when Issei skips class, we jump to him waking up to find Rhys with him, with Rhys telling him that she'll be going with him to form a pack. They encounter Anantaku, where she begs for help getting her together with her crush and get a notepad. And so concludes episode 6 with them getting together. The episode begins with Rhys informing Insane and Aja that they are in need of familiars for both of them, with Rhys, Arkano and Konako introducing them to their familiars. We learn that the girl who gave Insane the flyer was Rhys's familiar. Just then, Sona steps in with the rest of the student council, where we learn that she is the next head of the Citri, another large devil family. Saji, Sona's pawn, is extremely pompous and has an immediate rivalry with Issei. When questioned about Rhys's plan, it is revealed that people can only get a familiar once a month. Seeing as they are both in need of them, they decide to arrange a sports competition. The first match is a tennis match that has ended in a tie. So instead, they chose to play a team game. They agree on dodgeball, with Issei staying up all night sewing the headbands for everyone. Team Rhys emerge victorious, they then proceed to see the familiar master. 
They are then escorted to the lake where, due to a series of mishaps, Arzia ends up with a dragon familiar. He seems perplexed because everyone around him is crying, yet when we turn around we discover Rhys in a bridal gown. It is his and her wedding, but it's cut short by an ominous voice bellowing out to Issei just as he awakens with his booster gear acting up. We cut to Rhys and Akino chatting about him, where despite the fact that Issei cannot create a bond, he is always described as fun to be around. However, Rhys mentioned that it is not good and that she needs to assist him out more than ever. With Akino remarking that this is not typical of her and that perhaps something else is going on between them. With Akino leaving, an enormous figure teleports in, giving Rhys an irritable look. And we transition to Issei in his room, where a distraught Rhys begs Issei to take her innocence. But she is too late. I had a feeling I'd get here too late. Really, Rhys? You're here with this lowborn? You realize Sir Zex is going to be terribly disappointed in you. Her plan is thwarted by her brother's queen, who stops them and teleports her away. Azia, Issei and Kiba walk to the club room, but before they can get any answers, someone bursts in a room from flames. His name is Ryza, the heir to a noble devil family, as well as the fiancé to Rias. However, it is revealed to us that this was not up to Rias, but this was set up owing to a great battle and a need for a pure blood devils. However, because Rhys is opposed to this, her brother Lord Zex provides her the opportunity to break off her engagement. This is accomplished through the use of rating games. It's a game noble devils play with each other. Long story short, they and their servants compete in battle to determine who wins. Like the chess thing? Exactly. It's the reason we have individual powers that are inspired by what we call evil pieces, in order to play the rating game. Okay, that's good to know. They are, however, at a disadvantage because they're not only fewer in number than he is, but they're also less experienced. When Ryza meets Issei, he flaunts his harem in Issei's face, to which Issei responds, Screw you! The only person in this Calm room down, I need to impress is Rias! I don't give a shit what you think of me! Issei... We don't need to play some damn game! I'll kick your ass right here, right now! With Issei being knocked out, Rias accepts the rating game. With that, Ryza departs. We see everyone travelling to a remote location to train for 10 days. We begin with Issei's training with Kiba, who is practicing with swords. With the lesson training him to concentrate. The second lesson is with Akino, who is teaching Arja and Issei about the flow of magical force. Though Issei is more behind in Arja, she advises him to picture what he wishes to happen and to make it come true. That brings us to the following lesson 3 in which Konako instructs him on how to hit his opponent's core. Lesson 4 is cooking with Riz, but we get a glimpse of Issei's future power. However, Issei overuses his pill power on potatoes and is obliged to make a large amount of mashed potato. We cut to Lord Zex with his maid, explaining that he hopes she will continue on the road she has chosen. We then cut to Issei waking up Azia and asking for assistance with night training. The next morning, Rhys discusses the long ago struggle between the three factions, explaining that they are now on the verge of extinction, and that whereas they once had 72 upper class purebloods, they now only have three. With the game, new demons will get experience, and the winners will gain a better name for themselves and their families. Rhys then asks Arjia about her previous life as a sister. It soon becomes night, and Rhys and Issei cross paths. Rhys discusses her attack tragedy, explaining how powerful Ryza is and how the only losses he has ever gotten are due to him permitting it. However, this is where Rhys confesses her true feelings. Because of my title, I'm not ever recognized as Rhys. The House of Grimmery will always come before me. I've learned to adjust to it and make personal decisions accordingly. I understand that history is not in my favor, and the idea of love may just remain a dream, but it's one I'd like to keep. Whatever, I like you, and I don't care what your name is. I like you for who you are. Issei is now practicing with his boosted gear, with Rhys showing how far he has progressed. What? That's all I have? Trust yourself! 
Issei, you have become the linchpin of this game. Your attack will critically affect the direction in which this competition moves. Trust in us, and more importantly, you must trust in yourself. I trust you, and I know I can handle this. He can do this. Issei sitting patiently on his bed, waiting for the games to begin, with Archer sharing time with him. His alarm goes off, and the games can now commence. Let's go. It's time. They all meet up in a club, and we learn that her brother, whose real name is Lucifer, will be watching them. With that, they are teleported to another dimension that is designed after the school. They walk out with their battle strategy in hand, but before Inse goes, Rhys unlocks some of his power that was hidden away due to him not being able to handle it. With everyone in position, they all set out, with Konako and Issei being the first to face a team of four, with three pawns and one rook. Konako is to fight the rook, while Issei handles the pawns, with Konako dominating the other rook. However, Issei is having a more difficult time, but as the twins are in the air, Issei does his special technique, jumping up and taking both girls, then tagging the other one once he hits the ground. Bring it on! Here's my special move! Time to get... While being perverse, it does demonstrate to be a smart strategy, with them being unable to move. With that, Ise and Konako flee, with Akino destroying the building they were in. With that, a trap was created for three of Ryza's pawns, with Kiba taking on all three of them. However, a surprise attack takes out Konako. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on, Konako. I just wanted... I just wanted to serve Rhea as well. It's alright, we'll get you to Asia and she'll heal you up in no time. <laughs> no, don't go! Stay with me! <laughs> I can now take some Ryze's Queen and now that Koniko is out of the game. With Cuba having taken out all three pawns and catching up to Issei, they both enact upon the new plan. This ends up with Cuba finding a knight and Issei fighting all the remaining pieces. One on the other hand has no intention of fighting and is actually Ryze's sister. And now, Issei has to put up a decent fight with the Rook. We cut to Rhys and Arja meeting up with Ryza. Cutting back we've seen Keeper sacred gear, which he can use to craft any blade he wants. Issei has finished boosting and he pours it out on a Rook. Prior to another attack, the focus is now on Rhys and Ryza on the roof. All of them are currently in combat, with Issei receiving an upgrade. With that, Issei devises a strategy and employs a team move with Kiba to send all of his opponents flying and out of the game. However, their joy is cut short by Akino's defeat, which is immediately followed by Kiba. With that, both teams are down to three players. Issei dashes in to assist Rhys, promoting himself to that of a queen. With Issei getting healed and Arja collapsing, Rhys and Issei decide to go on the attack. Unfortunately, his power eventually catches up with him. Issei's body has reached its limit, but he refuses to give up. Ryza beats him down in frustration, but with Rhys full of feelings towards Issei and Ryza seeing Issei's persistence before the final hit, Rhys calls the game off. With that, it ends in the loss. We begin with Issei talking to the voice in his head, telling him to grow more powerful and introducing himself as the Welsh dragon, Greg, the being who inhabits his left hand. Issei awakens to find Miss Greyfree waiting for him, explaining that they had lost and Rhys has surrendered to save his life. 
It is said that the engagement celebration will begin soon. With Easy speaking with all of these emotions, she says that she has never seen a devil quite like him, with Lord Zex feeling the same way. As a result, she hands Issei a transportation card with a message from Lord Zex. If you want my sister back, Issei, you'd better be prepared to fight. Artya enters, hugging Issei, and Issei asks for her to assist him, promising Artya to bring Reis back and to be careful. With that, Issei strikes a bargain with the dragon, and we cut to the ceremony, where Issei bursts through the door, vowing that he will bring Reis back with him. I'm Issei Hyodo, and I'm here to bring Rias Grimmery back where she belongs. No one is going to take anything from her that she doesn't want to give. <laughs> Seize him! Lucifer then says that he was not impressed with Rise's performance, and as a result, has given Issei another chance. They agree to the duel, and he asks Issei what he wants as a prize, with Issei wanting Rias. Issei promotes himself to Queen, and demonstrates a new ability. He is now capable of transforming. We return to their agreement, where he receives a huge power that he can only use until the count of 10. Isin can put up a good fight against Ryzer, but he is still outmatched in numerous situations. But Isin has a secret weapon, a holy cross. It is shown that Isin offered up his arm for the power, but before he can deliver the last blow, he powers down but not before receiving a great deal of power. With that, Issei increases the amount of holy water he has and throws out Riser, which he cannot regenerate from. No! Stop it! Don't! This engagement's important to the future of all devils! You fool! A mere servant like you has no business getting involved with the affairs of your betters! Don't you understand? I don't care! Rias! She's the only thing that matters to me! And the fact that you'd force her to be with you! When she obviously hates you! Well, that's reason enough for me to take you out! Suck on this, scumbag! Bastard! He finishes the fight with one more blow. With the floor giving way beneath them, they tumble, reverse flying in and snatching Issei, and riding off on a griffin back home. You okay? Silly boy. <laughs> to give up your arm just for me. Hey, it was worth it. Totally. I would have done anything to get you back safely. Issei, look, the engagement may be over now, but I promise you this isn't the last we'll hear of it, not by any means. Then I'll give up my other arm, and then my eyes if I have to. Issei. I'll do whatever it takes. Nothing is gonna stop me. Uh, I'll always save you. Uh, I'm your pawn after all. It's my job, right? With the first kiss between Rias and Issei, they fly off home, with everything going back to normal. However, the one big change is now that Rias will be staying with Issei. And thus ends Season 1. Mm -hmm.